The existence of the economic problem forces choices to be made. What to produce, how to produce it, for whom to produce it for. Now, any time we need to make a choice in economics, we must consider the notion of opportunity cost. Defined, opportunity cost is the cost of the next best alternative foregone when a choice is made. Okay? So when we make a choice, what was the next best thing we could have done? Okay, the next best thing given up in order to fulfill this choice. So me making this choice to make this video, okay, I could have been watching TV in my living room. Well, that was my next best alternative that I'd given up. Therefore, that's the opportunity cost of me making this video. Now, when we consider opportunity costs, we're only looking at economic goods. In an economy, there are two types of goods, economic goods and free goods. Free goods have got no opportunity cost at all because they are in unlimited supply. So goods like sunlight, seawater, the air we breathe, these are all examples of free goods. They're in unlimited supply, therefore we're not concerned about how to allocate them. There is no opportunity cost to them whatsoever. Whereas economic goods do have an opportunity cost. We are worried about how to allocate those. Now we can show opportunity costs on what we call a production possibility curve, a PPC for short. But before we do that, let's just explain what this is. Now, a production possibility curve okay, tells us, okay, given a level of scarce resources in the economy, okay, it tells us the maximum we can produce of two specific things. In this case, I'm assuming in this economy okay, that a choice can either be made to produce goods or services. They're the two things that can be produced in the economy, goods or services. <coughs> The PVC just tells us, given the level of factors of production, okay, given the levels of factors of production in the economy, what's the maximum level that can be produced? Okay, how much can be produced of goods and services to the maximum level? The curve tells us the maximum. Okay, we're constrained by this level of factors of production. The curve also tells us how we can combine those factors of production to produce either goods or services. So at this point, we can produce more goods than services by combining our factors of production in that specific way. But if we, if we can combine our factors of production in a different way, maybe produce down here, we can produce a lot more services than goods. Okay? So the curve tells us the level of factors of production available in an economy, the level of scarce resources, but also tells us how we can combine our factors of production to give us different levels of goods or services in this example. Okay? Let's consider three points. Take point A, B, and C. Point A is inside the PPC. So let's say, as an economy, we were operating in point A, inside our curve. Well, that tells us that we're being productively inefficient. Okay, productively inefficient. Why? Well, because we could be producing a point B. Right? Now, if we were producing a point B, we would be maximizing the use of our scarce resources. By producing a point A, we're not utilising all of our scarce resources. Okay, we've got resources to spare, which we could be using, but we're not. Therefore, we're only producing this level of goods, this level of services, when we could have been, if we were at point B, producing this level of goods, and this level of services, a higher level of goods and services. Therefore, we're not maximising production at point A. We're wasting scarce resources by being inefficient. So point A is productively inefficient. Point B, on the other hand, on the curve, it's productively efficient. We're maximising the use of scarce resources. We can't be using any more, okay, because we're on the curve. That's the maximum level available to us. And at point B, we're producing more goods and services. We're being productively efficient at point B. Okay, so any point on the curve is productively efficient. Point C, we would love to produce a point C because compared to point B, more goods are being produced and more services are being produced. But it's impossible to produce there at this point in time because we're constrained by the curve. The curve tells us the maximum level of scarce resources available to us. Point C, we can't get there, we don't have that level of scarce resources. Okay? Point B though, as well as being productively efficient, as well as any point on the curve being productively efficient, any point on the curve is also Pareto efficient. Okay? Pareto efficiency occurs where nobody can be made better off without making somebody else worse off. All right? So if, a, if we're at a point of production 
where we can only make somebody better off by making somebody else worse off, then that point of production must, by definition, be Pareto efficient. Let's have a look and understand that carefully. So let's say, in our economy, we decide to move from point B to point D. By doing so, people that consume services will be better off, okay? more services will be produced, but less goods will be produced. So the people that consume goods will be worse off. Okay? By only making services better off, by making them better off, by making goods, people that consume goods, worse off. By definition, point B must be Pareto efficient. Go the other way. Let's say the economy decides now to produce a point E instead. Okay, well, people that consume goods are better off, more goods are being produced. But people that consume services are worse off. Okay, less services are being produced. Okay, so by making people that consume goods better off, we're making people that consume services worse off. By definition, point B must be Pareto efficient. Okay? <clears throat> Let's now show opportunity cost on the PPC. So if I draw exactly the same PPC, let's now show opportunity cost. Let's pick a point on the curve. Let's say, as an economy, we were producing a point A. And at point A, we were producing 95 units of goods and 15 units of services. As an economy, we now decide to specialise. Let's say we make that choice. We want to specialise in the production of services. Okay, maybe that's where the demand is in the economy. Therefore, as an economy, specialise in the production of services. So we move along the curve. Okay, let's say we move to point B. We combine our factors of production differently, so then we can produce more services. All right, so let's say, <coughs> by producing 15 more units of services, from 15 to 30, we're now only able to produce 80 units of manufactured goods. Okay? So, by us as an economy making the choice to produce more services, we're giving up 15 units of goods. Those 15 units of goods given up is the opportunity cost of making that choice of specialisation. But let's say as an economy, well, that's not enough. We want to keep producing more services, specialise even further. Okay, well, let's move along the curve then to point C. All right, and at point C, let's say the economy can produce 45 units of services, another increase of 15. But by doing so, we've now reduced our units of goods, let's say, to 55 units. Okay, so by moving from point B to point C, we've increased the production of services by 15 units, but in doing so, we've given up okay, 25 units of, of goods. Well, what's happened to opportunity cost as, we're as we specialise more and more? We've seen the same unit increase in services, 15 units here, 15 units there. But the opportunity cost has increased each time. We're giving up more and more goods as we're specialising. We've given up only 15 units of goods there, from going from A to B, whereas if we go from B to C, the same unit increase in services, we're now getting up 25 units of goods, a bigger opportunity cost than the first time. Keep going even further, let's say the economy wants to produce more services, go to point D, okay, so now 60 units of services produced, a similar 15 unit increase, okay, let's say now Okay, but at point D, 15 unit of and services, only 25 units of goods can be produced. Well, that's a drop of 30. Okay? Another massive opportunity cost, increasing opportunity costs, we can see from this diagram. Okay? So, the PPC can also demonstrate opportunity costs. As we choose to specialise, we're giving up more and more of something else. Okay? And why is that? Why does opportunity cost increase? Well, it increases because the PPC tells us that as we specialise more and more, the factors of production used okay, to produce more services, those factors of production are better suited to the production of goods. We know that because by producing more services, we're giving up more and more goods. Therefore, the factors of production are better suited to making goods and services. That's what the PPC tells us by it being this shape. Okay, but very simply, the idea of opportunity cost can be shown on a PPC like that. Okay, one final thing I want to show you on a PPC curve is how we can shift it. So again, let's draw our PPC and we'll still have manufactured goods. 
and we'll still have surfaces. Okay, there's our initial PPC. I'm now going to call it PPC1. And let's say we're now producing a point A on the curve. Right. Now we've said that the curve shows us the maximum level of factors of production, the maximum level of scarce resources available in the economy. Well, what if that changes? For some reason, that increases. What's going to happen? Well, we're going to have a new constraint, aren't we? Okay, the curve is going to shift outwards. Like that. Or that PPC2. Now, what are the consequences of that? Well, all of a sudden, point A is now productively inefficient because we're not maximizing all of our scarce resources. We've now got a new level of scarce resource available, PPC2. Therefore, we can increase production to point B. And at point B, more services have been produced compared to point A, and more goods have been produced too. Okay, so point B is also a Pareto improvement. Okay, we can make both parties better off. Okay, that's how Pareto efficient is point B. But how has that occurred? How have we shifted this curve outwards? What's happened there? Well, very simply, what we've seen, okay, what we must have seen to, to get that shift, is either an increase in the quantity or an increase in the quality of our factors of production. Okay? So maybe there's been an increase in immigration. Therefore, there's been an increase in the labor force. Okay? Labor is one of our factors of production. Therefore, the curve shifts outwards. We've now got more labor in the economy. Maybe there's been an improvement in the quality of capital. Okay? Capital goods. Therefore, okay, the curve shifts outwards. Okay? Because there's an improvement in quality, those machines can now produce more than they could before. Therefore, we have basically an increase in our factors of production. Okay, they're more efficient. So the curve shifts outwards for that reason too. So either an increase in the quantity or an increase in the quality of factors of production shifts the curve outwards, which means we can produce more of both goods and services. Okay? So that is PPCs for you. We've covered efficiency, we've covered opportunity cost, and we've covered shifts of PPCs. Okay? This is a very, very important concept in economics. You can expect lots of questions to involve production possibility curves. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much.